Okay. So, hello, everybody. And it's my pleasure to present to you Professor Luca Samponi uh, from Perugia University, from Italy. So we will have a talk today directly from Italy. And today he will speak about the, some results on the inverse spectral theory for the sturm liouville operator on the line. Please. Okay. Uh, good uh, afternoon to everybody here. And now I will... Oh. Okay. Uh, the results uh, today I speak about some results concerning uh, the inverse spectral, spectral theory for the student with operator on the line. For, before beginning, I would like to uh, say that this uh, there is a project uh, we, uh, which started some years ago together with my PhD advisor at the time, uh, which died three years ago, and some of the results here are due to the collaboration with, uh, with him, which was Russell Johnson from the University of Florence. So I would like to remember him for the help he gave me in, uh, in all my career. So, uh, let's start with uh, the famous uh, work of uh, Gethan, Levitan, Marchenko and his collaborator in, this, in the 60s. They developed the, the scattering theory for the Schrodinger operator with potential Q. And another uh, application of the inverse theory, theory was that of uh, Dubrovin, Matviv, and Novikov, which studies the, the inverse problem for the so called algebra geometric potentials. We will see in a, in a, in a few minutes uh, what, uh, what is about. Uh, the, both theories, but, but also others, uh, gave rise to large, uh, many results concerning both spectral theory and the connection with various uh, types of uh, evolution equations uh, of shallow water types, and but also others. For example, the cortex the, the rise equation, which is written here. Here, oops, sorry which is written here. Uh, to be more precise, uh, the Korteweg uh, the rise equation KDV uh, here is linked to uh, the, uh, the Schrodinger, I call it Schrodinger operator with potential Q. While there is, a, for example, another equation uh, important in the shallow water waves, which is the kamasa holm uh, equation, which is the one here which is in turn connected to another type of operator in which uh, the Q is equal to one, but appear a weight Y on the right side of the equation. This uh, kind of connection, connection has been uh, developed by Bill Sattinger and also more recently by Constantin. Uh, so it is worth developing a scattering theory for uh, for example, the operator defined is, uh, by this eigen equation, where there is a weight here and a potential one here. This is a, a motivation for uh, the study, but let's, uh, let's now for the for a moment uh, sum up what uh, has been done uh, before. Uh, when we uh, take the Schrodinger operator defined on the half lines uh, and uh, Actually, how the scattering on the whole line works in some in some words. Uh, one defines transformation operators, k plus minus uh, one on r plus and the other in on r minus, in such a way that the solution of the uh, value equation written uh, of this operator with this condition at plus or minus infinity can be expressed uh, in this way, with this uh, transformation kernel operator here k, which does not depend on the spectral parameter k. Yeah. So the, the, the scattering theory uh, is about uh, given spectral parameters, some spectral parameters, to understand uh, how is q. 
and uh, K in, some, in, 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 a, in, a, in a way, because K satisfies uh, uh, this uh, partial differential equation. And uh, the derivative of K of X, X, X with respect to X gives Q. So once you retrieve K, you can have Q by this formula. So you can recover Q by the knowledge of K. And uh, if you, which are the spectral parameters, uh, which uh, are needed to recover K plus K minus, and of course Q. And the kernels can be found under the well-known scattering assumptions on the, line, on the half lines, which is this for the positive half line and this other for the negative half line. For Q, there is an absolute value here which is missing, which uh, tells you that Q must decay fast. And when considered on the line, there is the scattering on the line which combines both of these. And this is uh, the scattering hypothesis on the lines, the well known, uh, there is another absolute value here, uh, the well known uh, scattering hypothesis on the line, which allows to solve the inverse scattering problem, which uh, means finding Q and then finding a K and then finding Q. And indeed, uh, for the scattering on the wall line, one looks for a solution of this form on the wall line, which behaves in this manner in general. It is an unknown theory. It's in the 60s by Gelfand and, and others. Uh, with the reflections and uh, reflection and transmission coefficient, these numbers here, uh, for the moment intended in uh, for K, real K at the beginning, are defined the scattering matrix. The knowledge of the scattering matrix is fundamental for reconstructing uh, for the inverse problem. Uh, this operator uh, S, uh, when this is the hypothesis is satisfied, uh, is uh, as as absolutely continuous spectrum. I forgot to mention before the half line zero infinity and can have at most finitely simple eigenvalues, negative eigenvalues. No, it uh, minus <coughs> Kj square, Cj square. They coincide with the, 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 the zeros the, or the poles of the, this uh, transmission coefficient. And the norming constants are given by the residues of, the, uh, of, uh, of this transmission, the, the derivative of uh, this coefficient here, the complex derivative of this uh, coefficient. Given this data, one can define uh, this uh, only for uh, the, on the, the problem on the positive line, uh, the analogous on the negative line. It's analogous the, 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 the the, the, the study is analogous. This uh, uh, function omega, which depends on the weight fun, on the weights, on the norming constant, sorry, and the eigenvalues, negative eigenvalues. And when one uh, solves this uh, equation, integral equation, which admits solution, unique solution, to recover k as one half, uh, one over two, uh, a plus of uh, a x t, t minus x over two. And uh, once you find A, which depends on C, which is a, a function which depends on the, I not, did not uh, write here, but I will, we will see later on, uh, which depends on the transmission and the reflection coefficients, then you can recover K and also Q. So the spectral data, we will see after in a more general situation, what, which are the scattering data and so on. So. This is a little, a little um, recall of uh, what has been done uh, uh, before. And analogously, uh, we can speak about the so-called algebra geometric inverse theory. Sorry, uh, there is a question. I cannot hear. Okay. Okay. Uh, the algebra geometric theory for the Schrodinger operator um, till arises when 
there is uh, in the finite gap uh, case. So there is the spectrum of the full line operator S is given by finite unit of closed intervals plus an half line. So in some cases, uh, uh, this potential uh, give uh, rise to a single meromorphic function on an algebraic Riemann surface R of genus of the degree G, which is uh, the numbers of the gap uh, of the intervals, uh, the spectral intervals, where one can study the property of the potential itself. So this function M has uh, is being meromorphic as G simple poles, which lie in the spectral gaps, which is in the, in the intervals lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 4, and so on, and which determine the potential Q via the well-known trace formula, which is the sum of the endpoints of the spectrum minus two the sum of, minus two the sum of the poles, which is a very, very important formula in, uh, in uh, inverse problems of uh, in the finite gap intervals uh, potentials. The inverse problem here is to determine the potential Q and lambda the, the end then the points of the spectrum are given and the initial P0, P10, P G0 are given. And the solution is given by the solution of this uh, system of uh, equation line uh, or the differential equation for P, which uh, a system of G differential equations. Solving this system, one have uh, the, the so-called pole motion, which determines Q. This is uh, the, 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 the topic, uh, the, 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 the key feature of the inverse problem on, for the algebra geometric potentials. Very briefly, obviously, obviously, because there are there are a lot of things connected to the Riemann surface, which uh, defines properly the motions of the of these points P J, which linearizes in some in some way on uh, the Riemann surface. Now, uh, let us move to the main uh, uh, topic of the talk, which is the scattering theory for the Sturm-Liouville operator. The purpose, the purpose is to understand what happens if uh, we consider a more general operator, 1 over y times uh, minus the differential, the derivative operator, the derivative operator, p derivative plus q on the whole line. And we develop a scattering theory when uh, many parameters or potentials, call a, a Biagus notation, call them potentials, are given p, q, and y. And if so, what is a scattering hypothesis? What are the changes that uh, we have to make? Uh, what kind of potential can we recover, find? And the same, the same things, uh, we can uh, ask the same things for the algebra geometric uh, inverse problem. Which trace formula can be derived? Uh, which motion uh, occur on the Rima surface? Uh, a what which Rima surface has been to be considered. So there are many questions. Uh, so let's start with, for simplicity, assume P equal to one. So there is no problem in carrying out all the discussion for P different from one, but for computational and also uh, reasons, uh, we will assume P equal to one. So we study this operator. But, but, but what are the conditions on, on P, which you should uh, put to to uh, yeah to make everything actually, work. Uh, actually, P is positive, a positive continuous function. Mm. Just that. positive continuous and bounded, a bounded function. You can assume P equal to one. Actually, yes, it's not, uh, and some necessary other assumptions are not necessary at all. Um, the, we study the full line operator defined uh, as L in this way with domain L2 with the measure Y the X where for the moment uh, Q and Y are bounded, uni or bounded uniformly continuous and Y is strictly positive which is a greater than a constant delta end of class C2. This uh, assumption can be a little bit uh, uh, 
we can a uh, little bit relax this assumption, but for the moment, let us uh, keep them so to make the discussion clearer and, uh, and faster. There is a way to, by approximation, by many, many, many way, in many ways to jump, relax this assumption. But for the moment, consider continuous functions, why we cast C2 and strictly positive. Uh, the, the why being positive is not so easy to relax eh, in, in general for these problems, uh, which uh, when Y changes sign, some problems appear, and it's not very easy, at least for me, for my knowledge, to, to solve uh, and to develop the theory as we will do here. Uh, it, in my also in my story, historical uh, uh, tradition, uh, it is convenient for me to introduce uh, a dynamical uh, setting uh, to study these uh, these operators. Uh, one consider a set of uh, potentials Q and Y, which defines a single function a from R to R two, satisfying the above properties, and then introduces the translation flow. Uh, one fix is one element of this set A, and then take the closure of the whole of this uh, of this element, which is a compact translation invariant set. And on this set, one I, I will not say now, but on this set, one can construct a, a fully non-autonomous dynamical. Uh, theory uh, and uh, setting to study the, 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 this operator by introducing uh, invariant measures uh, and uh, and so on. And um, the spectral problem associated is uh, this again value equation, which can be written in matrix form as uh, as here, and it makes sense to abuse notation. And uh, for A in the in the in the set A, take uh, A being the matrix associated, and study this family of differential equations, differential systems, index on X here. And the, the main concept uh, to study uh, this system uh, of spectral properties is the concept of the. No, 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 sorry. I there is some question. No. The exponential dichotomy. Uh, the exponential dichotomy or hyperbolic splitting uh, uh, tells you that there are briefly there are two sub bundles in uh, C2 such that if the initial condition which are lines actually complex lines if you take an initial condition in the in one bundle, the solution decays exponentially fast as uh, t goes to x goes to infinity. While if you take the solution, the initial condition in another one, the solution goes exponentially fast, uh, decays exponentially fast as minus infinity. And these bundles are uh, parameterized by the the image of a projection and the, the kernel of a projection. They are complex lines and they can be parameterized by the span of these vectors, one and plus, one and minus. And these two vectors are the valent functions, which agree with the classical definition of the valent function for the for this second order operator. Uh, but, but under the flow, they give rise to a function which depends on x. So uh, we have two, two variables here, x and y, and lambda. And uh, now, one, once we define these uh, vile functions, we have we have to make an important assumption to to uh, develop the theory for now, which is the following: that the spectrum of the operator contains an half line of absolutely continuous spectrum in which the violent function extend holomorphically when crossing the real line. Ah, this is not uh, a... It is a mild assumption. For, uh, actually, for the scattering theory on the line, uh, it is almost uh, surely satisfied. There is no, with no problem. 
uh, which will uh, go. But for other potential other situation, the, the, the assumption is not very, it's not so so mild at all. It depends on the on, on what potential you take and what situation you can you face in general. So why this? Because if you take a local parameter parameter at uh, infinity, you have a, a an expansion of in a Lorentz series series of n plus and n minus. You can uh, retrieve this coefficient recursively, and for instance, uh, alpha zero is this quantity, and alpha minus one is this quantity here, which you will uh, have a, a key role in the, our discussion. Take uh, in mind this uh, inequality, because we will. For to develop a uh, scattering theory, we will impose at the beginning that this is zero. Because if this is zero, all the other coefficient in these uh, expansions are zero. And when this is zero, the solutions are very easy to, to find directly. So if we consider this again value equation, again as before, a the, 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 the purpose is to now to fix one of the parameters, potentials, and see how to reconstruct y, the other. So we can fix q and see to reconstruct y, and the or either or fix y and try to reconstruct q. Now, suppose that the full line spectrum has as absolutely continuous part the half line lambda star plus infinity. Now set q tilde being this function here, which is the derivative of y over 4y, the, the, the derivative of it minus plus the same thing to the square. This uh, function q tilde is uh, very important and appears everywhere in the spectral theory for in also in other situations, also in other spectral problems. A basic, it is a basic function. We will see it will appear also in the theory of algebra, in the algebra geometric theory. And uh, curiously, uh, if I can uh, say curiously, I, we sta uh, I started studying these problems with the algebra geometric uh, inverse uh, theory, and then I moved to the scattering theory. And when this function happened in the in the algebra geometric theory, we didn't know exactly why it appeared. But now, uh, when I moved to the scattering theory on the on the line, I understood why this function Q had to happen also in the algebra geometric uh, setting. So we will see later on where it happens and why. This is a very important uh, function here, which depends on Q. If Q is, is, is depends on Y. If Y if Y is equal to one, this is zero. And you cannot see it uh, when you study the Schrodinger operator because Y is one, uh, this is uh, hidden. You cannot see it. So set uh, mu. Uh, we have to translate the spectrum. Uh, why? Why I see in just a while. Why I assume uh, lambda star here not zero? Because because in general, when Q is not uh, one and Y is not one and or, the spectrum doesn't start from zero. Maybe it starts from one or another constant. I don't. We don't know. So we assume that it starts from a constant, positive constant and uh, set uh, mu, translate, we are arguing by translation, set mu lambda minus lambda star, and write the equation, uh, initial equation in this way, where the left hand side is uh, here, the left hand side plays the role of the equation minus uh, uh, phi, the second derivative of phi equal to mu phi in the scattering of a Schrodinger operator. This one is the basic 
um, operator, one takes to develop the scattering theory for the sharing operator. The, 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 the one which has e to the minus plus minus e k x solutions. So you can uh, uh, develop the theory uh, starting from this equation. This is the analogous one in which appear q tilde here. And set uh, for, for uh, notational uh, device uh, here, e of x, the, the integral of the square root of y uh, from 0 to x. So the general solution of the, this equation here here is given for mu to positive mu is uh, is sine cosine uh, solution and this spectrum is zero infinity and no isolated isolated eigenvalues but recall that mu is lambda minus lambda star so the spectrum is lambda star actually with you if you consider lambda uh, is lambda star infinity now Consider the half line restricted operators together with the decay condition, which is similar to that of the Schrodinger, but we have this uh, function, weight function here, y to the minus uh, 1 over 4. And here there is he uh, of x, which is the integral of the square root of y. Again, if y is equal to 1, it is x, which is the case of the Schrodinger operator. Right. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, we want to write these solutions as uh, the basic solutions of the left operator here, this, plus a transformation operator which, uh, which defines, which can recover, which can find, we can find phi by this formula here, where there is a kernel here multiplied by y, plus the solution again here. K is uh, defined, uh, K plus minus, because it's uh, on the half lines, is defined on the domains uh, class as classical, because it's a classical, uh, classical uh, uh, domains, T greater than X or T less than X, and sus satisfy some regularity condition, which are being L2, L1 uh, in, the, in the lines, in the half lines, and this uh, the condition here uh, of the k the, the k condition here for k and the derivative of k. Okay. It turns out that uh, if one one makes the computations, uh, it turns out that in this time in this case, uh, the partial differential equation which uh, k has to satisfy is the following. Which is analogous of that for the Schrodinger case, where y appears here, here, and here appears a combination of q of x over y of x, q of t over y, q tilde of t over y t minus lambda star. Here again, if y is equal to one, this disappears. Here, this is zero. And this is one. So we have the usual equation for k and this initial condition, which is the one which permits one to recover y or uh, q from the knowledge of k. Uh, here appear again y and q tilde and lambda star y. If y is equal to 1, it is the usual one for the Schrodinger case. So this is the difference. The main difference is which appear already here in this equation and also in this. We have to solve this equation to find k and then to recover q or y. There is a little bit difficult. There can be a little difficult, uh, some difficult to recover y because it appears here as uh, in the first and second derivative. So it is not uh, a linear, uh, easy way to recover y, but can be done. I will speak about that later on if I have to, a little bit of time. Now, use the variation of constant formula, writing k square equal, mu, equal to mu for notational and computational convenience, and expect solutions uh, 
in this form. This equation for phi can be solved by successive approximations, but we have the scattering hypothesis, which permit one to make sure to be sure that the series converges as usual, which is this. Now, uh, compare, we compared with the scattering hypothesis for the Schrodinger operator, we have that here appears uh, E of X, which is not a very great difficult because, because Y, E of X is the integral of Y, the, the square, square root of, of Y. But here we have Q tilde minus Q minus lambda star Y, which is a dysfunction as to decay fast as is uh, at a fast decay at plus and minus infinity. Again, uh, I am not here, I repeat for the last time, if uh, y is equal to 1, it is a scattering hypothesis on the line for the sharing of a, the classical one. The solutions, uh, the, the, now the, the, the story goes as usual uh, with no difficult, difficulties, so the solutions are analytic on the positive uh, kappa plane, upper kappa plane, and continuous and bounded when uh, the imaginary part of K is zero for all X. And there is a, a bound, a two bound for the uh, solutions, which is uh, expressed in this formula, which is very important, where appears here the, the coefficient uh, E of X which is very important because it uh, allows one to apply Tishmarsh theorem, uh, Tish theorem to uh, prove that there exists an operator B such that phi can be expressed in this way. We are, there is I of X. And then one sets uh, K equal to this, uh, this uh, form in the, by this formula and and recover k, and in turn recover y and y and uh, q. So the knowledge of b allows one one to de define k, and then to recover q. Let us pass to the move to the inverse uh, inverse uh, scattering theory. So assume the scattering hypothesis uh, to be valid which is the one written here. And as usual, uh, find the look for solutions which have this the behavior R plus minus infinity, which is the standard uh, setting for uh, scattering problem with the reflection and transmission coefficients in this matrix. A12, A21 are reflection, and A11, A22 are transmission coefficients. Uh, actually, the coefficients uh, A11 and A21 determine uniquely all the other coefficients at uh, first sight, but actually one, only one of them is needed to recover all the others. So uh, at first sight, uh, we need two, but then uh, when we study a particular behavior, for example, of A11, we can recover A11 from the knowledge of A12. We will see it later. But at first sight, we two of them allow to recover the others. The function B12 admits uh, uh, at the beginning is defined on the real line, but it admits an analytic extension on the uh, to the upper half plane. The zeros of this function must be purely imaginary and simple and a finite number and also positive because q is po uh, if q if q is positive uh, they are positive the quantities minus kj square which is minus cj square are the isolated eigenvalues negative eigenvalues of the this operator on the wall line Remember that we are dealing with uh, uh, k square equal to mu, so negative but translated. Okay, they are translated of uh, uh, by lambda star. For each of these eigenvalues, 
there is the corresponding eigenfunctions, which uh, give the norming constants. So we have the objects from uh, to to solve the inverse needed to solve the inverse problem. So let us state it. Use the scattering data. One transmission uh, reflection coefficient n values the n isolated eigenvalues discrete eigenvalues and the positive norming constant positive in the sense that they are ready to the function phi plus on the positive half line this is a scattering set so since uh, uh, there is a relation between a12 and a11 uh, of the uh, beta uh, of between the absolute value of the uh, function a11 and that of a12 it is a standard fact that you can recover a analytic function the upper uh, a meromorphic function on the upper half plane by the knowledge of this the, the value of this of this uh, absolute value on the real line by in this way because there is a particular relation between uh, a11 and a12 we can recover a11 in this way where so v appears a12 which is fixed and the eigenvalues here set this uh, b22 for convenience a12 plus a11 and a21, which is the other reflection coefficient, minus b22 of minus, minus k plus, times a11. Define c minus and c plus by these transforms here. They are L, L1, so they can be transformed uh, in this way. And uh, define m minus j the counterpart, the negative counterpart of the norming constant in this way. So define again omega in this by this formula, where c plus minus are defined in this way, or the inverse uh, c minus and c plus are the inverse Fourier transform of uh, a12 and a12 and a21, the same, it's the same, plus this sum, which is the same as for the uh, Schrodinger operator here. The form is the same also for this coefficient. Doesn't appear here y or nothing else, but uh, it appears in the in the equation, in the integral equation for recovering uh, k. Indeed, let a a now be the solution of this integral equation. Here appear y here here and here so the dependence of y which does uh, not appear here appears in the integral equation a plus is defined for t positive and n minus is defined for t negative it is not uh, equal to k plus or k minus but It's uh, it's uh, similar because we can define k plus minus in this way here, and see that k plus is defined for t greater than x and k minus from this for t less than x. We have k plus and k minus from the scattering data. K plus k minus satisfy the a partial differential equation and we can recover for fixed y or q and or vice versa we can retrieve uh, the function actually you have q, q plus provides a function uh, k plus provides a function q plus k minus provides a function q minus and respectively y minus y, y plus we have this relation here, but uh, then you have to prove that uh, Q plus, that this is a standard, uh, um, there is a standard way to prove that Q plus is equal to minus or Y plus is equal to Y minus. 
and to uh, see that they define a single potential Q and Y on the whole line, which satisfy this hypothesis here. With this relation. From this relation, you can recover, if you fix Y, you can re easily recover Q. If you fix Q, you can recover Y. But Q, uh, to recover Y here, you have to solve a differential equation because Q tilde involves the second derivative of Y and the first derivative of Y. Uh, it can be proved uh, by direct uh, quantitative estimates that uh, in the scattering case, at least, the solution exists and is defined globally on R. Why? So the problem has a solution. Globally, we want a solution which is globally defined. So the glo global existence, uh, so, um, global uh, solution existence for y. If y is defined in, in, in the interval, you cannot uh, solve the scattering problem on the whole line because y is defined on an, on an interval. So you have to be sure that the solution of this differential equation, here are the derivatives. When q is fixed, uh, can be solved. And this is, can be done by direct uh, quantitative estimates, at least when the y satisfy the scattering hypothesis which uh, we described before. So this is a, a brief explanation of brief, uh, I, I hope is sufficiently clear, explanation of the scattering theory on the line for this uh, Sturmuville operator. We will apply in a few moments uh, to some situations. Let me focus a little bit on the scattering hypothesis. Okay, here. Uh, first of all, the scattering hypothesis gives uh, some uh, restriction to the possible, the, pos the possible uh, y and q. Uh, for instance, uh, assume that you fix that you fix uh, q uh, or equal to one, which is uh, a classical situation in studying the so-called acoustic equation, which is used in the gamma own evolution equation. <coughs> Sorry. If Q is equal to one, and you assume that Y decays to some constant in such a way that this function decays fast, then Y has to decay to one over lambda star. So you have uh, in the, from the scattering hypothesis where it has to go Y. On the counter side, uh, now let fix y. y can be any function. Here you have uh, a quantity which depends on y, the derivative, the second derivative of y, which is q tilde. I just a while just just to uh, sorry, just to. Uh, here is Q tilde. Now, I, I mentioned it uh, several times, so it's, it's, it's good to let's see it again. He, here is Q tilde. Uh, OK. Assume that you fix uh, Q, uh, Y, and uh, so also Q tilde is fixed. And then Q has to decay in such in, in, as Q tilde ma, uh, plus lambda star Y. The fact is that uh, I think you can allow y to oscillate, oscillate fast, fast, fast as you want. And uh, so also Q, you can solve the inverse problem when y, which is this weight, perturbation of energy, call it perturbation of energy, oscillate very, very, very fast. And uh, you can recover Q in, Q in such a way you have the scattering uh, the scattering uh, in this for to be in the scattering case so it, i think it can be interesting uh, as uh, pro, uh, can be an interesting problem in some uh, sense which enlarge the enlarge uh, or the class of potentials for which scattering theory can be established and studied in some sense maybe 
but just some observation, there are many, many, many situations. It's just a few words uh, on the algebra geometric inverse problem. So again, the same uh, problem. And now for simplicity, assume that uh, lambda equal to zero is not an eigenvalue. Here, the value function are defined via exponential dichotomy as before. And since lambda is not an eigenvalue, you can define a function m0, m, uh, capital M, which is the, the value difference. So we call it the value difference for lambda equal to zero. Now, I have to make, to solve the, uh, the uh, inverse problem, uh, an important assumption. Uh, so at the beginning, when the algebra geometric uh, inverse theory for the Schrodinger operator was posed by Dubrovin, Matviv, and Novikov, they assumed that uh, there is a certain function to the setting was this, assume that there is a certain function, which is defined in some way, which is meromorphic on the Riemann surface of genus G, uh, having some uh, uh, poles on some sets. Uh, we have, uh, we wanted to, uh, then uh, in a paper of Kotani, uh, some years later, appeared a, in, in a, in the, an interpretation of this uh, fact by using uh, spectral properties of the operator. And the interpretation uh, is this. We require that the spectrum is a finite union of uh, finite union of intervals plus an offline as before. But the second assumption is that the Lyapunov exponent vanishes almost everywhere on the spectrum. The Lyapunov exponent uh, uh, indicates the rate of exponential decay of the solutions. Now, the, uh, the, uh, the, this assumption can be can appear to be mild. One say, but the, but the Lyapunov exponent is always zero in the spectrum. This is not true at all. There are many cases in which this uh, is not the case. And the Lyapunov exponent can be zero in a, in a set of positive measure in the spectrum. There are examples which can, can be study furnished in many situations. So this is not a, a mild assumption at all. Anyway, in this case, Lyapunov exponent can vanish at the end points of the spectrum. So at the points lambda j can vanish when uh, it, it encounters in some sense uh, the uh, we will see some poles some uh, points in which the value functions goes to infinity vanishing lab on exponents uh, tells you that the solution inside the spectrum oscillate and there is no other behavior of the spectrum of uh, in the spectrum of the solution in this case the function which define a meromorphic function on the Riemann surface, surface are the valent function. So this is uh, the, the sense of this assumption here. If you do not uh, have this, they do not extend holomorphically through every open interval contained in the spectrum and are meromorphic on the complex plane, having poles in each spec one pole in each spectral gap here and this is another important fact in the spectral picture of the problem each pole each pole is a pole of either or of m minus or of m plus which say for example is the first one is a pole of m minus it cannot be of M plus. And the second is of M plus. And alternatively in this way. These values uh, turns out to be the isolated eigenvalues of the half-line restricted operators. Why there is a X? Because uh, we act then by translation. 
we take a, a potential a, a, an equation and then we act by the translation flow and the, the poles the the the, um, the spectrum remains uh, the full line spectrum remains uh, um, remains uh, does not vary but the isolated eigenvalues of the half line operators can vary when we act by translation and they vary when we act by tra by translation so again the inverse spectral theory in this case is to fix the value difference and the initial poles, the initial uh, isolated eigenva eigenvalues of the, of the half line restricted operator. Then define this system of dif differential equations to find PJ, the motion, the pole motion. And we have the trace formulas, which are these ones. Why is recovered by this product? This is a completely new formula because in the Schrodinger case, y is equal to one. So it doesn't appear at all. You do not have to reconstruct y. And q has this form here, which is a trace formula very similar to that of the Schrodinger one. Here appears y, but here appears again q tilde, which is the function, the potential, which has as for which the spectrum is zero infinity and no isolated eigenvalues. So there is another theory, another aspect of the inverse spectral theory, which is, which is uh, uh, concern, which concerns the uh, algebra geometric theory. So uh, let us uh, finish the discussion with some application here. Kurtov de Vries equation, this is a well known example, is associated to uh, a Schrodinger operator. Now, assume that Q can be recovered by the scattering data. So we have a reflection coefficient and the discrete spectrum. And the norming constant we, we take to be all equal to one. And then retrieve the a transmission coefficient AK. Take the coefficient transmission, the coefficient, the transmission coefficient. It turns out, uh, this is the key feature. If you start by initial condition here, which satisfies the scattering uh, hypothesis, uh, then the flow induced by the KDV, that is this, the function QT, XT, which is given the solution of this equation here, is as a spectral, which means that the spectrum does not, does not vary in T, and also the isolated eigenvalues does, does not vary with respect to T. They are all the same uh, uh, to that of the, of the initial one, the initial condition here. In this way, to, is to recover the solution U, you have to study Q, the recover Q, XT. So since these quantities, which is fundamental in, this, in the inverse scattering theory, uh, does not vary, the only thing that can vary are reflection and transmission coefficient. And indeed, they vary in this way. This is a very well known for the KDV equation. The trans uh, transmission is constant and the reflection behaves in this way, varies with t, with t. You know, for each t, reflection, transmission, eigenvalues, you can find q by the inverse spectral theory and determine the solution of the KDV. The same thing can be done with the gamma sum equation, which is associated to initial condition which defines this weight function y in this way so the associated spectral problem is this one q is equal to one here and y is defined in, in this way and we use the scattering hypothesis here now q is equal to one 
and this is what I said uh, before, lambda is the endpoint of the SOT continuous spectrum, and we reconstruct for mu equal lambda minus lambda star, y via the inverse scattering theory, which we can develop as uh, I said before. Take uh, the reflection coefficients, the transmission coefficient, transmission reflection, and the slide eigenvalues. It turns out that in this case as well, the discrete eigenvalues do not depend on t. And it can be proved that the remaining coefficients, transmission is constant, and the remaining coefficient evolve in this way with respect to t. There is a t here, there is a t. X per t. Okay, sorry for here, t. t here with respect to t. So the knowledge of this coefficient allows to uh, study, the, uh, develop the inverse the scattering theory and to recover y in this, in this case, which gives in turn the solution of the, uh, the kamasa Olm equation. This has been done by Constantine and others some years ago, but via uh, by, uh, through another method, not directly by the scattering theory, but by by means of a transform, which is called the Liouville transform, which brings this uh, operator in an operator of Schrodinger type, exchanging y with a function q by a change of variable, which is implicit in the sense in the same in the change of variable there is q, there is y. So it is possible to develop a theory uh, with the Liouville transform, but uh, it is implicit in some sense. Another example, which is new, you can solve also system of differential equations. When consider, you consider an equation of this kind, qt, ut, where alpha here is a function of x and t with some properties, prescribed properties. <coughs> uh, this, this system is uh, in a way which is analogous to that uh, explained before, linked to this equation where two potential appears, two, Q and Y. Well, well, QT, once you recover QT, Q, which is uh, possible because it is a, a linear partial differential equation, you can uh, find U and Y and recover Y, it is the solution of this equation by means of the scattering theory. Uh, the above example is a case of a much, much more general situation in which there are hierarchies of evolution equations which contain KDV and Gamasa Ohm, and uh, whose, flows the, whose flows generated by the solutions are isospectral. That means left, leave the spectrum invariant. So, you can study the, the solutions uh, by means of uh, uh, the scattering theory as well. But this is a work in progress. There are some uh, difficulties in the defining and uh, studying the behavior, defining, not, not defining, studying the behavior of the transmission and reflection with respect to T in this case. There are more, much, much more complicated equations and much, much more complicated computation to, to do. So, I, I think I can stop here, just uh, uh, two words. Um, I don't know, but maybe there, there can be some application in uh, uh, scattering of light, uh, and especially in uh, ah, ra rainbows. Uh, I, I think uh, that uh, there is some strange situations in which sometimes uh, in a rainbow, you see uh, in a band, color band, uh, you see a little spot of another color or a line of another color. Especially it happens in the red strip. This happens because lights, uh, uh, light refracts and cross his section with very different densities. I think a way to represent this is uh, that of perturbing the energy by weight. I don't know if it is physically consistent. I, I hope so. I think so. So, uh, indeed, uh, there is a radial equation to study this phenomenon in general, which is this, the classical radial equation for the scattering of light. 
and there is a potential uh, the, the square well depth and the uh, reflection uh, the barriers and the potential wells now here is k square what happens if uh, this n varies with r y instead of one and you are there is a, a governing equation which is of this kind and maybe we can uh, we can study this with the scattering theory to find solution also knowing the solution which which has some properties to understand uh, how the energy or the potential is perturbed to give uh, rise to some phenomenon like the color strip or the spot on the on the rainbow this is a, a possible applications to some physical other physical problem so i thank you all of you for the attention and uh, i hope the lecture has been uh, interesting for you thank you thank you very thank much, you very for, much. For, for a very thank interesting you. Thank you. i see there are questions, there are questions from Ricardo Ricardo. Yes. Okay. Good morning to all of you, or good evening. Uh, I am Ricardo Verde from Mexico City. And my question is, if you have a characteristic... Ricardo, the sound is not... I cannot not hear very you. Well, so probably you can... It's a place. Well, maybe the problems in the uh, with the oh, I have I, I hear noise. So, uh, can you can you hear me? Uh, no, no, very very bad, very bad. Ah. Oh, how long? So, maybe we can. Uh, yeah. Well, let, let us hear me. No. No. Just try, 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 maybe. Okay, the question is uh, if you have a uh, so necessary and sufficient conditions. Ah, no, 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 not yet, not yet, not yet. Yeah, I started studying uh, this problem uh, a few months ago. There, there is a question which must be, we must have an answer. In, in some time, yes, I, I do not have no. I have for now is sufficient sufficient condition, not necessary. Yes, thank you. Okay. Very much. It's important. Thank you. Other questions? I I, I have some questions, Luca. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the, there was. Uh, I think in the 80s there were some works where this uh, uh, scattering theory of Gelfand Levitan was extended onto the case uh, uh, when, in your notations, y is a linear function. Ah, yeah? I, I didn't yes. know. There were, yes, there were several works in this direction. So, okay, if you don't know, then there is no question because. Of course, it would be interesting to to see what happens because in in your case uh, there will be some simplification. Yeah, this Q, Q tilde will be simpler. Yeah, but but I, I think uh, if you if you look at uh, this case, I, I don't know uh, now. Just some. I don't know how the scattering hypothesis uh, no, no, is not here. Uh, maybe. Uh, okay, this is the basic. If y is linear, uh, y is fixed to be linear. Yeah. Uh, okay, y is fixed. So Q is uh, as a form which uh, depends uh, heavily on y. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in, in this uh, in this situation, if y is linear, Q. Uh, Q tilde is simple because uh, is uh, uh, co constant. Maybe I don't know. Now I have to check 
Okay, because uh, uh, y prime is uh, constant. So yeah, it's not constant. It's uh, one over linear function. No, it is interesting. Uh, yeah, it would be interesting, to, interesting to see to what study. happens. If you can give me the references. Sure. I will be very, very, very happy to 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 read them. Maybe yeah. give, like we can find I some points in common here, or the hypothesis has to be changed in some way. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, another question: uh, Do you have some asymptotics uh, for this function c plus c minus? Uh, which appear in in this uh, input kernels. Yeah, you mean uh, K C, C capital? C? No, uh, C capital plus C capital minus. Uh, more or less, it was uh, slide twenty seven, I think. Yeah, C plus. Yes. Yes, this C plus C minus. Do you have some asymptotics? For yeah. Them? Yes. Uh, blah blah blah. Yes, but uh, no, no, no. I don't remember. <laughs> okay. and, and I say yes. There are asymptotics. Uh, they are. They are the same as the asymptotics for the for the Schrodinger while the Schrodinger case. I don't. I cannot. Maybe they are multiplied by uh, the, the usual function y to the one over four, uh, y to the minus one over four. It's the usual function which appears everywhere in uh, in this situation. If you look here, y to the one minus four, y to the one minus four, which is needed to to write things well. Okay. Yeah, I can uh, check. I th I think this is a very important, uh, in fact, development of of this general levitan marchenko scattering theory, and also another dubrovin novikov theory as well. So thank you very much for for no, accepting the invitation. But probably there are some more questions. Yeah, yeah. I don't hear. Oh. Well, I th I think we have no more questions. It was very really nice explaining it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I I I, I thought uh, I, nobody told me this uh, in my life. <laughs> I explained the well because I I, <laughs> I tend to speak very very all fast and uh, with uh, awful English. So. Uh, thank you. <laughs> no, it was pretty clear. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll, let's send to the speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And please, if you can do this turn on camera, so.